Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we will be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34, Day 1. And what a day, because the first two matches, I was getting ready to say, nope, not for me. Okay, I'm, I can't say that fully about the first match. The first match with Bolton and Bolton Oleg, and who did he wrestle? Um, Bolton Oleg, was uh, he went against Ren Narita. Okay, that one wasn't that bad. Um, cause to me, Oleg it's just, was it's it's little it's other things. It's it's move usage that turns me off. That's what gets me. And indie style stuff. You know, you don't pop the crowd with long term waiting or needless stuff. You know. And spitting in the face of reality just to do a cool move is annoying to me. That's not all that happened in this, but it's just certain things. Um, like so, for example, okay, look, let's get into this. Okay, so G one climax 30, 34, day one, B block. They did A and B block today. Long event. Day two is currently underway as we do this. Um, and it should just be one block. Yes, hopefully so. It's less. So we got B blocks, Bolton Oleg versus Ren Narita. And my notes on this are short, but Ren got some size on him, and he uses a few new moves to us, like the guillotine knee drop. He did that from the top rope as well. Yeah, it was nice. Oleg is a powerhouse and looked really good. He won using a deadlift F5 DDT. I don't know what else to call the move. I don't think, matter of fact, I can just honestly say Brock Lesnar didn't innovate that move, but I don't know who did it first. But he hit that F5, and that was just a transition move so he could get up and do a steamroller to get the pin. Okay, what's a steamroller? That is like the... Uh, Pick him up on fireman's carry and roll over. Uh, roll over. Uh, oh, okay, okay. That's usually a setup move. He used a legit finishing move to set up for a setup move finisher. Do, do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. So that's why I wrote no. I, I, I put the note following the F5 with the setup move was stupid, and I hope not to see that again. Like maybe that was just a hiccup or something. I don't want to see that stupidity again. Narita, like him. Bolton, Oleg, for the most part, like him. I like the fur hat too. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just saying, I don't want to see that stupid again. Most likely, I will. Mm -hmm. But then that would also explain why you go on first. So now, but next we get A block. So we got Callum Newman versus Shota Umino who, for some reason, went blonde, yeah. just like so many others in Japan. And I was so incensed by it. I wrote, Umino went blonde. This is what happens when a superpower drops two bombs on your nation and your nation ends up looking up to them. That's what that is. That's how I see that. And it ticked me off. I'm like, you could, you could dye your hair any color of the spectrum and y'all keep choosing blonde. What the hell? Y'all got hair that people here would kill for. <laughs> and you're trying to get hair like people here. Oh well, yeah, it's always green on the other side. Do you get on the other side and realize you were colorblind? And it's or orange. You don't. <laughs> or you don't realize that. You think, oh man, everything's better. Everything is better when you got money. Just throwing it out there. So, they opened up with a long-term high-speed rebound session that ended with Umino landing a pop-up fall followed by a drop kick. I thought that was that was a great opening. I was like, they ain't going to do it again. And they didn't. And I had to know, Umino has put on a lot of weight in all the right areas, very evenly distributed. Newman used a legit high-angle kneeling reverse Boston Crab as a simple hold. 
or the lion tamer, as some would say. There's a reason why he did that. That was it was stupid. What? What was the Umano reason? has just is recovering from some sort of severe uh, hip or lower back injury. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, oh, okay. I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> and so, a lot of the moves that I was noticing was targeting the area that's a problem for him. The area he was grabbing as he was walking out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's recovering from an injury to that area. Okay. So when he put him in that move, although you may think it was stupid, it was a focused attack. Oh, okay. So we just indie this shit up and it's okay. I didn't so, say it was okay. I'm just telling you. So I'm going here, based here, on the commentary. I'm, I'm then the commentary is stupid. So listen, listen. This is what you do. The match starts. Punch him in the back. Forearm. Elbow. Drop him. Body slam. That was kind of the point of the body slam anyway. Body slam. Put him on the mat face down. Grind a knee to his back. Drop a few elbows on his back. Work the back. The match goes up and up. You do your other moves. You get your shit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get your other stuff in. You keep working the back here and there to let everybody know. I still remember this. And then at clutch moment, when you get into the crescendo of the match, when it's almost time to go home, then you put on that elevated Boston Crab like that. You know, it adds dramatic effect to it. It makes one as though, will he tap now? Instead of, hey, it's the opening match. Let's fire pro this. So, first of all, it's to be expected. The dude obviously idolizes Osprey and is younger than him. There is no one to teach him that that's what he's supposed to do. He didn't come up in the dojo. I don't know where the fuck he came from. So, that's why we get what we get. Okay. It sucks, but that's it. And you're not going to do about it. Stupid is stupid. And I'm slowly accepting that. And a lot of people might think I'm stupid, but I'm like this. If you start off a fight with your best move and that person eat it because they haven't been worn down, what you got left? They're not interested in telling the story. They don't know how. They don't know how to tell a story and they don't want to tell the story and they don't want to hear a story. They don't have time for it. That's not what they come from. And mm. you see it when they wrestle. Yeah. Now, Ren can, yep. but he's also working with who he's working with. Yep. Because Ren told a story. He had to fight up. You know? Not Sh Ren. Show to Umino. Show to, yeah. He had to fight up as well. I named the wrong person. Oh, okay. Mistake. I thought you was harkening back. No. So, I had to know this match was mostly okay, but there was so much indie in it. I missed when the G1 was all about hard battles with believable moves and attempted pin and submissions. Newman wins after a double stomp to the back of a leaning over Umino, followed by a springboard ace crusher. Now, I had to note, Umino at one point hit a tornado DDT from the middle rope, floated over, and transitioned into an elevated reverse DDT for a two count. Two finishes and nothing for it. I was ready to stop. I was like, well, can't do the G1. This is bad. And I, I was like, I was like, let's see, let's see what's the next match. The B block match. El Fantasmo. I was like, oh, crap. Versus Hinare, the never open weight champion. I don't remember this match. I was like, my note, why well, put your singles champ in this singles tournament for a belt he will never win? They're going to let Hinari be IWGP world champion, who they, they who was in this as well. But there's sometimes where I'm like, okay, world champion can be in it because that wrestler is used to being in it. I can see that. So, okay, fine. <sighs> it's, it's, it's subtly annoying. Um, I had to note Hinari is larger, looks different, and to us, he looks like a young Conan. I also noted, I want to skip this match. But I want to see Hanarde. Really good match with Hanarde being a beast. I had to note that El Fantasmo hit a cutthroat burning hammer as a setup move just to do a swan dive body press for a two count. But he didn't do his other stupid stuff. Hanarde was a monster. That one, uh, that one with the fisherman buster and pinfall. But I also had to note that Hanardi is f he's fully polished, heavy hitting striker with amazing control over himself, blended with an array of power moves. The only indie crap from him 
was keeping his back to the opponent as he was as he was wilding out at the ropes. And I wrote, ELP should have struck him in the back of the head just for good measure for that. Turn your back and st- I'm I'm your opponent. You gonna turn your back and start growling and stuff and hyping yourself up the crowd? Hit clothesline in the back of the dome. Turn your back on me, sucker. Let, you know, club a lane. You know, you still with me, Cedric? I'm here. Yeah, I just can't comment because I didn't see it. It was a good match, <laughs> but I think that's when you was dozing or you was just tired. I was both. <laughs> So next we get a block match. Zack Zabri. Oh, y'all to go. You know, I, I think it's worth watching that match. You know, you go back and watch that match. You be like, wow, this dude is scary. Okay. Um, a block match. Zack Saber Jr. Oh, and my app. Um, El Fantasmo. That was one of his better matches. Yeah, because he's abandoned some of the stuff he used to do. So, I'm like, I'm giving him a chance. I'm giving him a chance, just like. Cedra, I wore her down and she gave Christian Cage a chance in TNA and how she eventually gave Tai Chi a chance. I'm giving ELP a chance. So we'll see. So A Block, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Great Khan. And I was waiting on this match. That was an awesome match. Still a match with few hiccups. But those two locking up has been glorious for us each for us each time we've seen them. Okan was trying many times to land some iron claw move, but Junior kept reversing it. And at the end, Junior reversed it and he hit the Michinoku driver two for the pin. Mm-hmm. Zach calls that the Zach driver, and it's great to see him hit it like a legit finisher. With his added weight, it looked even better. And at that junction, I started thinking. Did they get the stupid out the way first? Yeah, somebody ordered the match card. Yep. Except. Except. We'll get there. Go ahead. B Block. Hiroki Goto versus Jeff Cobb. Oh, man. Another amazing matchup. Goto has found his intensity. He was coasting four years ago, and three years ago, he found aggression. Today, we see him... We see that he has a balance of intensity and aggression. Cobb has gotten a, a gotten better shape. He's leveled up his conditioning and has improved his pro wrestling. The match ended with Cobb deadlifting Goto into a vertical suplex, transitioning that into the Tour of the Islands reverse power slam for the pinfall. That was incredible. He also did two standing moonsaults. The first one he missed. The second one he hit. And the second one was even better. Yes. This... Jeff Cobb is incredible. Yes. Cobb, Cobb is awesome. Just stop going to AEW, man. He, stop. The, the the companies are aligned. I know, I know, I know. Just it's almost like, hey, we need some some people from you, or we'll just send our jobbers. That's what it's like. And Cobb ain't no jobber, but he's not up there, you know. Mm-hmm. So next we get A Block. Jake Lee versus Sonata. Mm. This match was good until the end. I'd rather this match gone on first. This match was good until the end. Odd Not match. Not great. It won't great. It won't great, but it was good. Until it won't the end. horrible. I would give it two stars. They were singing Jake Lee's praises, and I'm like, he's got his. I want to be like. Uh, What's the ugly dude that went to WWE? Good grief! What's his name? Nakamura. See, good, because I didn't want to say it. He wants to be like a toned down Nakamura. He's more attractive, but he's not as flamboyant. It's kind of come off as annoying. That That's his persona. Yeah, congratulations. See? He did right. Yeah. That, right? Right? He did right. And he got the desired effect. And you can look at him and see what he's going for, and you feel that, and it bothers you, or you like it. He's done his job perfectly. He is, but it's like, you know, you can go behind the curtain and stay. He didn't do anything in the ring to make you be like, I want to see you wrestle, although you annoy me. That he did not achieve. One, he can pro wrestle. I'm going to give him that. Oh, he can pro wrestle. Yeah, great. But young lions can pro wrestle. 
there was nothing that was like, oh man, yeah, you're worthy of all the the, tra- the shit they're talking about you right now. Because I didn't see it. I wrote, it was an odd match that showed a little bit of what Sonata can do and less of what Lee can do. Short match, ending with a dashing boot kick from Lee to put Sonata down for the three count. A damn boot kick. It was the same kind of boot kick that uh, Minoru starts matches off with. Yeah. Now, wrote, we do not approve of this. That Nagata uses midway through the matches. He finished the match. What is a, so a, a boot kick again? All the moves out there you could do? A boot kick? Oh, man. This uh, one could have been the third match. In his defense, what moves? Everyone uses those moves as transitional moves now. Canadian Destroyer, transition move. Just the fans in attendance knows this was a poor showing. Their silence is a, is, is a known sign of disapproval. Granted, it was a stiff looking kick, but it was still just a boot kick. Mm-hmm. The fans, you could almost hear the murmuring and groans of what the hell. Yeah, this could have been match three of the night. So, next, it starts getting better after this. B block match. Yuya Wemura versus David Finley, who is also the global heavyweight champion. So Yuya has put on some weight. He has. And David doesn't look anything like he used to. Yeah, his face is slim. I don't know how he did every, that. <laughs> every two to three years we see David. It's like, this ain't the same dude. This is that dude's like evil twin. Give it 10 years, it's going to be F- Finley Jr. walking out. Like, what the hell happened to you? Really? <laughs> he's going to need about four inches in height, and he's going to have to gain about 110 pounds. Yeah, he'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I noted that he looked a lot like Jay White, and then the voiceover guy for Don Callis agreed. Look, I don't know his name, but that, I, it sounds like Don Callis. It won't him. It won't him. But good grief. So Yuya has a fight. From, has to fight from underneath while David shows power, control, and utter disrespect. You spat out there at Hiromu. Mm-hmm. Surprise Hiromu ain't get up and whoop his ass. You know. Yuya has a very, very Ricky Steamboat style. And eventually David hit what is the dominator, a Ron Simmons move, for a two count. But at least he went for the pin. He, 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 he did the Ron Simmons move. But as you said... He ain't Ron Simmons. He ain't Ron Simmons because when Ron Simmons did that, it was, that was a wrap. Like if if you kick out, you're gonna have to get worked on in the back. Mm-hmm. Like he survived, but <laughs> yeah. You you takes two buckle bombs, and commentary had to had a good one. That's not a replay. That's damn reality. <laughs> I like that. After the buckle bombs. Yuya counters another bomb into a Hurricane Rana for the pin, defeating the leader of Bullet Club, the global champion, and in his first G1 match, damn, it was a damn great match. I was it into was. that. Yeah, Yuya did a good job. That he did an excellent job being a babyface and fighting from underneath. Yes, this match pulled us in. We found ourselves cheering for Yuya, who looked all but beaten at one point mm-hmm. and slowly pulled himself out of the fire. It was that good showing. I, was, I, had, I had a few goosebumps on that one. So next we get to uh, A Block. Gabe Kidd versus Evil. And I want that far from being like, yeah, Gabe Kidd can be thrown out in the street and, and, and left there like, like in Kickboxer. Just so Kid has gained some weight and it looks good yeah Evil hasn't changed nope and he still has Dick at his side he still he still brings Dick with him and then I wrote Kid has been on the indie scene too much or something he climbs the post on the outside and boasts for a short bit without looking at his opponent and then does a moonsault where Evil has to run into place to catch his dumb ass like Hangman Page yep and I wrote, Evil should have stayed right where he was and let that idiot fall flat. Mm-hmm. I think everyone should do that to these no-look moonsaults moments and stuff. You don't want to see where I am? You don't, you, you, you that entitled? You can just jump and just be where you, okay. Pap! I bet that hurt like hell, didn't <laughs> it? Outside, 
kid stuns evil and runs long distance and then back the bell ain't rang yet for the match and they outside they they they, they in the crowd they, yeah they in the crowd kid runs he stuns evil and runs a long distance and then back to evil who throws a chair into his face dropping him it was great yep <laughs> all of us commentary and us was happy evil dropped to drop that idiot and then I had to know they gave kid was someone I was high on for a long time as he underwent retraining with New Japan. Yeah. Then I had to note at this moment, the bell rings and it was so late. I thought someone was ribbing. Nope. The my matches just began. I thought somebody went up there, got the bell and rang it like LOL because nope. they've done that. The evil got in the ring and Marty and Simon just rang, rang the bell. I was like, you know what? I ain't got, I ain't got time for it. Yep. <laughs> but after this, the match was an actual match where Kid fought tooth and nail, bringing out subtle skills from evil to counter it. Kid mm -hmm. showed power, urgency, and anger. You and forethought. He, he obviously, you know, anybody can scout evil's matches. He, I guess he's still doing the same thing every match. Yeah. But he made, he actually made evil work. Because yep. the same old, same old wasn't working. Yep. Kid countered all of Evil and Togo's antics, and in a fit of anger, he threw the ref from the ring. That should have been a disqualification, but when he returned, the ref, that is, Gabe was down on the mat, so I guess that balanced out. Evil hit his STO finish and got the win. It took being choked by Togo. He got garroted. He got choked by Togo. Yeah. Low blow by, e by Evil. The magic killer double team finisher on him. And finally, as I stated before, his finisher called Everything is Evil, if he's going by that name. So, I had to note, this was still a damn good match. And Marty After Asami, the stupid was over. And Marty Asami is used to being abused anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, used, but that dude, you can, look, you can look at him and tell, that dude is built. He's like, he could whoop everybody's ass. Yeah, he's a mighty bite under them clothes. So next, we get B-Block. Konosuke Takeshita versus... Yota Suji. Oh man, this is the match I have been waiting to see to catch the end. And why? Because you can see in AEW that he can wrestle. He just has nothing to work with. It's like a cook having no supplies. So they just got a spoon in an empty bowl and mixing air that's what he's been doing for years aw just mixing air and then someone today gave to catch some ingredients and he made that shit cook <laughs> <laughs> yes yota hit a diving rolling frankensteiner it was perfectly old school i haven't seen i hadn't seen that done in a couple of decades that was just perfection after a good struggle, Konosuke hit a sheer drop brain buster, but he couldn't get up to go for the pin. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. They battled up top, you know, at the very top for a few, and they kind of have falling here and there, but they made it look like a battle. They made it, it like a struggle. struggle. You know, up there too long, slipping, falling, it looked bad, but, and you could tell the crowd got worried. You could tell the crowd was starting to cheer. And I don't know what they were saying, but you could tell it was almost like a, please don't die. <laughs> exactly. And, and, it, and it worked because too many times they go up there and you can tell it's cooperation. And you're not going to let somebody drag you to the top turnbuckle and throw you off and not give some sort of resistance, right? Yep. And, <laughs> and, and the thing is, they did good because they made it look like the other person isn't messing me up. Things that happen, and I'm trying to get this guy. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get this guy, and that's what I liked. So that was good, but when they finally got it, Suji hit a Spanish fly for a two count, and he landed on Konosuke. So, uh, but he, he landed kind of stiff on him, too. Mm -hmm. Suji then hit a large headbutt to the abdomen, and it was, it it came out of nowhere. Yeah. Because he leaned back, and I was like, what you gonna do for that? Pap! I was like, oh! If, if Takeshita had buckled and dropped to his knees, it would have been understandable and good effect. But then Takeshita later hit a 270-degree falcon arrow, got the pin. And a lot of times, they, he kept trying to get the blue thunder bomb on, and he didn't. I was like, and I said, 
Why are you gonna try to get that move? You don't win with that mid card move anyway. But it's beautiful. He <laughs> does that move the exact same way every time. His form and his technique are flawless, and it is magnificent. Even if you don't win, it's magnificent every time. And when we last saw Suji, he was a young lion, you know, carrying the bags of, of Tanahashi. So he's come a long way, and he did a fantastic job. He's great. Yep. And I had to know that Takeshita won in his hometown or province in his first G1 match, in his first New Japan Pro Wrestling match, and against a blossoming combatant fresh off of his CMLL excursion. Consejo Mundo de Lucha Libre. And you could see, you could see Takeshita felt so good about it. Yeah, he looked satisfied. Like, Like finally. he just sat back from the table after eating a, a nice, nice meal. <laughs> yes, like, almost like if, if I had only seen the indies and then I come and see this, I'm like, so this is what wrestling looked like. Mm-hmm. That's how he looked. Um, it, it, I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I got subtly choked up thinking about it, cause you could. It almost like I miss home. That it was that look, man. I wish I could take a picture and just post it up here. But New Japan don't jack me up for that. I wish he transitioned to New Japan the way that. Dumbass scapegoat Jack Perry transition from New Japan back to AEW. Just going back home, man. It's okay. Yeah. With the talent thus far seen in this G1, I can honestly say I'm kind of intrigued about how New Japan is going to go. Yeah, because even, even, you know, they were talking about there's lots of new faces. There's some old faces, yes. But there, 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 there was obviously a concerted effort by those in control of New Japan Pro Wrestling to have this be different. And Tanahashi wanted to get those young lions fresh off of excursion and who's been in there for a year but not getting a chance to finally show people what they can do to get in the limelight. And get this experience. Because this G1 is different. Normally, after the first week, they are banged up. Mm-hmm. So we're going to just see how they go. And with Umino working, you know, he, he, he got, he's had a back injury even as a young lion. He's had some back injuries. So got to wonder. So next, we get the main event. A block. Shingo Takagi versus Naito Tetsuya. And Naito, the current reigning International World Grand Prix heavyweight champion. He got it off of Goon, and and that's good. I was at Forbidden Door, Mm -hmm. and I wish Naito would not cross it again. Yeah. So, main event, it had to get to the main event. They were shooting for a five-star, but they couldn't get there. They weren't going to get there, not with this match. Um, This match in name alone is the main event. They had hiccups here and there in the opening five minutes. But they picked it up a few notches and laid into each other with strikes and some evasion. It looked good. They started to get their pro wrestle on. And I had to note that Naito is super light on his toe kicks. He always has been. And he got that from his excursion in CMLL. Because at first he did good toe kicks at one point. And I guess he went back to CMLL because right before he went, he had deeper toe kicks. I remember that. He was an epic baby face. Things went bad. Maybe the thing with Keiji Muto or something. He goes away for a while, comes back, and his toe kicks were lighter. It's almost like leading in to scare someone so he can get the upper hand, not so much damage anyone. So I'm not sure what he's going for, but they are really light and sometimes don't even touch. I've noticed that for a couple of years. So I don't know. I just, I just had to note that. Um, Naito started running low on gas as high damage from Takage was more than prevalent. Takage was just coming. He he was just coming like a bad dream. (laughs) And Naito couldn't do nothing to forget it. And Shingo, he no-sold Naito on many moves. And then Naito, in what can be seen as a controversial move, performed a hip toss into an odd net breaker on Shingo. You know, it it landed awkwardly on Naito's knee. Yeah, like it was 
ill placed. Mm -hmm. It was weird because Shingo went up and he he went up like I'm going for this big hip toss. I'm going into it. And then you can see Naito cut it short. It was weird. It was mm -hmm. awkward. I've not seen Naito do that before. That's I mean, he might have been doing it in the past two years, but I hadn't seen it before that. But it, it, it hit, it landed on Shingo, and Shingo was hurt, and Naito was laying there looking like, <laughs> yeah, you could see on his face just like small little smile on his face. Like, at first, it was oh crap, is he all right? Then it was kind of. <laughs> And I'm like, you little shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you little evil devil, little. So, ah, Naito, Naito's a villain. He is. He's such a villain. Um, Naito went on for many moves, and it, well, he went for many moves, but it took everything he had just to get them. And then at the top rope, after a few hiccups, Shingo hit a super rolling Spicoli driver that hurt his neck and Naito's ribs a little bit. And you could see Shingo's head bop off of Naito's body. It, it was not good. And, and Shingo couldn't do too much because his legs was elevated against the ropes. Mm -hmm. He had to absorb all that. And it was bothering him after the match. Mm -hmm. And later, Naito was able to hit Gloria. Um, and then he countered a Destino from the last, well, last of the dragon. Shingo kept trying that move. Um, but then putting a stamp on the match. Takagi hit what they call the Takagi Driver 98, which looked like, honestly, a butterfly uh, back-to-belly power bomb, like it was an old-school gonzo bomb, Luther style, just arm trap style. And then after that, he hit Last of the Dragon and got the pin. Mm -hmm. It was a long match. It didn't feel like it. <laughs> I uh, know. I'm saying long because I know it went about 22, 23 minutes. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. But I just know it. Niji um, Poon, I was like, okay, that's 20 minutes when I heard that. And I was like, okay, so they over 20 minutes and they going, they still going. But Naito, you could tell he was just getting drained little by little. It was a few times he got popped. Mm -hmm. And he like he was having to clear the cobwebs for like, real. Like it was nobody home. I've seen his working stare. This was not a working stare, so <laughs> he was getting popped. So, yeah, look, it started off not so good, but it ended very, very well. Very well. Um, Zack Zaber Jr. still performing well. My fact, let's see, Shingo, A Block. Um, Naito got Zack next. And oh, no. where is it? I'm looking because I wasn't paying. I was Nope, B block. Okay, uh, Hanade's in B block. I was. I would love to see Hanade and Shingo go at it. Yeah, I would love to see that. So overall, and I know you disagree. It's okay. Um, I enjoyed the first day. It was yeah. Overall, a, I enjoyed it, it too. It was a breath of fresh air with all the bull we have been watching for months. It's completely been, different from AEW. I, I have been missing nice, stiff forearm and elbow attacks. I miss moves looking like they should be doing damage and then they do damage. Seeing them connect and not watching folks stomp on folks and be like, what? Why are you just laying your foot on him? <laughs> it, it was nice seeing that. It was. You know, this is my kind of wrestling. It looked like a fight. It looked like people are trying to win something. I just wish they would stop the stupid. That's, I just wish they stopped the stupid. You don't use legit finishes as setup moves. Just, I would, I, I, if I were the, the booker, I would be like, you need, don't do that no more. I be telling don't do that. You can do that in other promotions. You're not going to do that here. You do that here, you're going to start working for free. And we know how to hurt you, so don't start getting big ideas to go doing stupid stuff in the ring. Don't go into business for yourself. You know, you're not going to bring the stupid here. That's, that's how I would be. And I know that alienates a lot of people. I know that took a lot of people off. But if I was watching some independent promotion, 
I ain't gonna complain about anything because I expect it. It makes sense. It's what they do. AEW, it's what they do. So I don't complain about it. I don't even talk about it. You know, I don't. I let Jim Cornette and them handle that. I've been stopped. Unfortunately, the pool of talent is that's generally where they come from, which leads to the problem. And they are of the mind where they will not listen and can't be retrained. This is who I am. This is what I do. LOL. YOLO. Whatever. So, yeah, it, it's annoying. But at points watching, new, watching this, it gives me hope, though. It gives me hope. Um, there's some people not in it, and they don't need to be because they're never going to win. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's okay. I, I'm honestly, I can't wait to see uh, day two. So with that, this has been Cedric Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34, day one. And with that, we want y'all to be good, be chill, be safe. And with that, we will see you next time. <laughs>